Okay, now diffusion and temperature. We saw that this diffusion coefficient that we've used now is something very specific to the conditions of the experiment, the type of chemical, the type of membrane. And so you might expect that things like the environment or temperature of that environment might influence the value of the diffusion coefficient. And so, yes, it does. To help us relate that, we have an equation down below similar to what we've seen in the previous chapter on um, the vacancy as a function of uh, temperature, the count of vacancies as a function of temperature. <coughs> so in this case, the diffusion at a particular temperature um, is a function of some initial value, okay? So sometimes it's called the pre-exponential value. You can think of this as almost like a baseline diffusion constant, okay? So we start with that, and then it gets multiplied up to a larger value provided the outcome of this exponential. So it's going to increase with temperature. So we expect this exponential to be larger than 1 uh, because we move the d value up from a d naught to a larger diffusion constant with increasing temperature. <coughs> Okay, so what's in the exponent here? So it's e raised to the power of qd. So this is an activation energy for uh, diffusion. So we've seen before that the idea of moving one material through another, we have to activate that process. It's going to cost us energy to move one atom into a vacancy or to move an interstitial atom to another interstitial site. Um, or it's going to cost... <laughs> energy to move methylene chloride through the butyl matrix of the butyl glove. There's an activation energy value there. So we may be presented with this information in energy units of joules per mole, or it may be in other units like electron volts per atom, as we've seen in previous cases. So we'll have to consider calculations or choosing the right one in certain cases there. And this time... Um, uh, we were, if we're using things like joules per mole, we would apply the gas constant here. So 8.314 joules per mole K is the newer version for us. In previous cases, we had a Boltzmann value here, which uh, was per atom. But now we have this per mole. Okay, So notice that the per mole value is given us when you condense... Avogadro's number with a Boltzmann constant, you end up with the uh, ideal gas law constant that is this value, 8.314 times, uh, 8.314 joules per mole K. Okay, again with a dot K there. <clears throat> okay, and then of course temperature. Temperature is what's going to give us um, an ultimately higher D naught value. Okay. So, Let's take a look at some diffusion constants as a function of temperature. And so we've seen that D increases with temperature exponentially because temperature was in the exponent. So D goes exponentially with that temperature. So here's some cases. Here's carbon diffusing in gamma iron. Here's carbon diffusing in alpha iron. We did some questions uh, to show those directions a moment ago. And then down here, we have other options. So there's iron atoms moving in itself, if that is packed in a gamma lattice. Here's iron atoms moving in itself, if that iron is packed in an alpha lattice. And here we have aluminum moving throughout aluminum as well. So what have we seen here? The values for carbon in moving in gamma are on the order of 10 to the minus 7 through to about oh uh, about 10 to the 11, 10 to the minus 11, okay? And we can compare that to these other options where the metal atoms are exchanging for other metal atom sites and we're not using interstitial sites. And these values are about 10 to the 10 to the minus 12 
through to about 10 to the minus 19. So in, in short, when the atom, metal atom is exchanging for other metal atoms, these appear to be pretty small diffusion constants, again, characterizing that not a lot of material is moving throughout the material very quickly, and these tend to be higher. So these interstitial sites are higher. So hopefully that reminds us of what we've seen already, that interstitial diffusion is faster and easier than substitutional diffusion. So putting a metal into another metal atom spot in a lattice is harder because we need vacancies, and there are not a lot of those nearby, versus an interstitial mechanism where one interstitial atom has access to many vacancy sites. And we see that in the data here. So regardless of temperature, if we increase temperature, you can see that these diffusion constants increase regardless of what scenario we are in. <clears throat> okay, very good. So uh, let's tackle an, ex an example here to see if we can handle this uh, new concept for us. So here, at a particular temperature, this case 300 C, the diffusion coefficient and activation energy for copper moving in silicon are the following. So the diffusion constant at 300 specifically is 7.8 times 10 to the minus 11 meters squared per second. And the activation energy is 41.5 kilojoules per mole. So we could say, well, considering that we could warm the material up to 350 C, what is the new diffusion coefficient? Okay, so we saw a moment ago that we had D is equal to D naught E raised to the minus Q divided by RRT. So Q, D in this case for diffusion is listed there. So at a particular temperature, we could call it temperature one, we get a D1 value. At another temperature condition, D, we would have T2. So at temperature condition two, we end up with a different coefficient um, for diffusion, okay? So this is asking us what is that new diffusion coefficient given that T2 is 50 degrees warmer than T1 starting at 300 C. Okay, so to help us think about this, um, and I think some of you have tackled this in some homework already, <coughs> uh, what's in common here is of course this constant D naught, and we are um, essentially need to work with D1, D2, two different temperature pieces, and so solving one of these equations for D naught, if you want, might allow us to put these two different equations together and um, solve, solve the problem. Okay, so what that looks like is trying to recall that, of course, these exponentials can be rendered more linear if you want, that is, allow for maybe easier algebra if we take the natural log to eliminate exponentials. So in the case of the first one, D1 is equal to D naught, <coughs> e to the minus q d over r t1. If we first move the d naught to the other side, we can then, as a second step, take the natural log. So d1 divided by d naught is equal to e to the minus q d over r t. Natural log of both sides. So natural log of that fraction, d1 divided by d0, is equal to now just the exponent, minus qd over r temperature 1. <coughs> um, when one handles the log of a fraction, you, you can simplify that. So the natural log of d1 minus the natural log of d0 is equivalent to the left-hand side of that equation, and that equals minus qd over rt1. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully it's not too much of a jump for you if we realize that 
Now we could simply apply um, the te second temperature condition and generate a second equation. Okay, so if I try to make some room for that new version, I'll just get rid of that. Our new equation would therefore be <coughs> d2 minus d0, so natural log of d2 minus d0, this time for a different diffusion constant for a different temperature, is equal to minus q d, lower, lowercase d, it's just a sub, sub there. Think for that matter. Let's make sure that other one is obvious. Divided by R T two. <coughs> okay, so um, we could now it's now a little bit more obvious that these two features are in common with these two equations, and so we can solve for that and then input it into the other to, to eliminate some um, unknowns in this, in this question. Okay, so that follows, therefore, that if we, if we do that and solve for the... Uh, the, the natural log of d naught. Let's multiply through by minus one, and then you can see here that we're going to have to add natural log of d one to both hands, both sides, to transform the bottom equation. So I'm just going to do that quickly, and move this piece over here by a simple addition. So that is going to look like minus d1 canceling out here. And showing up over here, natural log of d1. <clears throat> okay, so now this piece can insert itself there. And so we end up with natural log of d2 minus Q sub D over R T one minus natural log of D one, all equal to minus Q sub D over R T two. <clears throat> okay, so a little bit of algebra here, but now we are seeing an equation where we need only the activation energy which we are provided. We need the two temperatures, which we are provided. We need one of the diffusion constants, which we are provided. And we can solve for the last one. <coughs> okay. So the final kind of version of after cleaning some of this up will look like the following. Just go to the next slide here, and I'll clean that up on the previous slide to show you the cleaner version in a moment. We will have natural log of D2 minus natural log of D1 equal to minus QD over R, taking that common piece out of the um, Q terms from the previous, and that's going to be multiplying by the remainder, which is now minus 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. <coughs> um, rewinding the sort of step we did earlier, natural log of D2 over D1 this time is all of this. And so now if we take e to the both, both sides, <coughs> we'll 
we have d2 over d1 is equal to e raised to the power of a more complex e uh, exponent, qd over r, times 1 over t2 minus 1 over t1. <coughs> okay. And then, of course, um, that gets transformed by multiplying d1 across, since we have d times, so that's our initial clone, Diffusion constant at lower temperature times an exponential, that is, the activation energy, Qd, divided by the gas constant, R, as a negative, multiplied by the inverse of the differences between the two temperatures with the larger one first, of course. So that's the 350 in our case, minus 300. Of course, those are in Kelvin. And there we have our equation to solve for our new diffusion constant at a different temperature. Okay, so um, just make some room for uh, the input values there. So this would give us D2 is equal to, now we're just simply plugging and chugging away on the equation, 7.8 times 10 to the minus 11 meters squared per second was the first diffusion constant at the lower temperature value, e to the power of, okay, so put a big bracket on that to make that obvious, minus, and then we had an activation energy of 41,500 joules per mole, okay. Um, notice that we moved out a kilojoules per mole so we're now joules per mole there, divided through by the gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole dot K. <clears throat> okay, so this is why we had to get out of kilojoules, because the gas constant is in joules. And then we have to multiply that by the inverse, the difference in, between the inverses of our temperature. So that's going to be 1 divided by, so it's 273 plus the degree C temperature, T2 um, was 350C, so that's going to translate to three, 623 Kelvin minus 1 over the lower value. So this is 50 degrees Kelvin lower at 573 Kelvin. <coughs> and that is our exponent. Okay, so if you do that carefully on your calculator, you should get a new diffusion constant here that should be higher than the first, so it's a way to check our work, and we should get 15.7 times 10 to the minus 11 meters squared per second as our answer. Okay, so in this case, D2, this is the diffusion constant at 350 degrees C. We can uh, check our work. The initial one, of course, was shown here, and that was the D at 300 degrees C, and so 10 to the minus 11, we were about uh, just, just under half <coughs> of the value, 7.8 times 10 to the minus 11, and now we're about double. So while we're showing scientific notation in a funny format here, uh, we've left it that way so we could show you that this 50 degrees difference has doubled the diffusion constant here which again is characterizing how easy it is to move matter across, across the, uh, the, the material here. Okay, so some of that is all shown here um, for you, and you'll have access to the PowerPoint slides if you um, didn't follow the this, this scribbling here, so hopefully that was okay for you. And that represents the end of this video. So with that, we'll see you next time, and hopefully if you had any questions, you reach out to me, and we'll go from there. Thank you.